Well, our next guest, he needs no introduction, and he would have chomped through a few pies in his time. Baz McCullum, he's over there in the UK, and uh, he's going to join us, my friend. Brother, how you doing? All right, brother. I just had a little pie myself, actually. Steak and ale pie, followed by a Guinness <laughs> in the little, a little, a little pub that... Um, they film Notting Hill lad or something. I don't know. It's pretty flash anyway. It's lovely. <laughs> oh, mate. Chipping into a nice fine pie. I had a good pie the other day as well. I love me pies. But, mate, uh, it's been a big couple of months for you, Baz. You've had time to settle down and reflect on a big old series. To all, to all mate. How's the last couple of days been for you? Oh, it's been pretty awesome, brother. I think the... Um I mean, the whole last two months has been a, a pretty awesome ride, actually. We obviously, you know, we went 2-0 down in the series, which, you know, uh, put us under a little bit of pressure. And to respond the way that we did and um, play the cricket that we did was, um, yeah, I was pretty proud of pretty proud of all the boys and the way that the skipper was able to hold the fort for everyone when, uh, when we were under pressure and respond the way we did. I, you know, I think in the end, 2-2 was a great result, and, and we were pleased with uh, with what we were able to serve up, particularly in the in the latter part of the series. You were able to respond, Baz. What, what were those messages that you were giving the lads to be able to get a response? When you're 2-0 down, backs against the wall, teams can fold. But you saw a little bit of resurgence. You made changes. Chris Wokes came in, and how good was he for you? Yeah, Wokes, he was awesome. Um, he's been around the game now for a long period of time, and I guess with uh, with Jimmy and Jimmy Anderson and, and Stuart Broad there, um, two of the game's greatest ever fast mm. bowlers. His his opportunity's been slightly limited, but look, when when his opportunity arose, he really stood up and performed brilliantly alongside Mark Wood. Those two are great mates as well, and they made a, a significant impact on on the series. And I guess you know from our our point of view, uh, we actually played pretty well in the first two Test matches, and we had our opportunities to. Mm. To win those games, um, Australia were good enough to be able to to get the results in those games, and so from our from our side of things, we were just trying to make sure that our messaging was really consistent with what we started out with, and you know the skipper and I are, are very aligned with with how we like to go about things and the the messaging that we like to to deliver the boys, and and that didn't change right throughout. Um, but I think if anything, you know our confidence levels rose knowing that that we were capable of being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Australia, and I think we ended up playing better at the end of the series than, than we did at the start, which was great. Yeah, it would have been it would have been nice to get uh, a deciding test um, there, Baz, because I tell you what, down here the Ashes is alive and kicking. Everyone in New Zealand was right behind um, uh, you and your team, England. The English. You, you, know, you know what we're like with the Australians, but the, I see the banter's alive and kicking, Baz. Just... What's it? What's it been like being in camp and and everyone talking about who said this, who who did this, they didn't do that. What's it been like? Well, I didn't read any of it to be honest. I think that's the greatest risk because you just you know you, <laughs> you you do the cryptic crossword rather than reading the sporting news. I think that's that that certainly helps. And and from our point of view, we talked a lot about um, trying to block out all the external noise and just. And any messaging should come from within rather than from those on the outside. I mean, we we get the benefit of watching these guys work day in, day out and and put in the yards. And, and so, therefore, you know, if they want any kind of feedback, then we're probably the best mm. place to give it. But clearly, I mean, what comes with the Nash's series is a, a hell of a lot of, um, I guess, uh, eyeballs and, and, uh, and column inches. And that's one of the great aspects of it. Um, but the minute if you start carrying it out onto the field, then that's not ideal, right? So, so we just tried to block out as much as we could and keep messaging really simple. And look, oh, I'm just really proud of how all the all the boys played, and I thought they conducted themselves brilliantly too. Leave it up to us, people like ourselves, to to create all the headlines and internally just go about your well, money. I used to be one of you as well, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, mate, we miss you. We're, we're, we're happy to have you on the show. But Stuart Broad, mate, we, he made a, a big, big news in that last Test match. He is retiring from Test cricket and what an impact he's had for England. He's played a hell of a lot of tests. He's taken plenty of wickets. But, mate, this player and what he means to the team. And how'd you send him off? Yeah, look, Brody's been unbelievable, really, throughout his career. He's playing 160-odd test matches as a fast bowler is, is significant in itself. Um, you know, the impact that he's had uh, in the last 14, 15 months since the skipper and myself come on board as well has been has been phenomenal. You know, he's he's led a bowling attack and 
you know, I think he played all six tests this summer and did a, a fabulous job and could easily have carried on playing, but he chose this stage, which for him has always been the thing that got him up and going, which is playing against Australia in the Ashes um, as the time for him to, to, to depart. And I thought it was such a fitting farewell and we were able to sit around in the dressing room afterwards and present him with a nice bottle of champagne and say Jimmy Anderson said some, some wonderful things about him and uh, I managed to play golf with Brody today, actually. Um, he almost got a hole in one. So imagine that. He hit his last <laughs> ball for six in Test Creek. He's taken, he's bowled his last ball and got a wicket. If he had got a hole in one today, it would have been, <laughs> would have been the perfect <laughs> trifecta. But he sort of just, he missed out by about an inch. But oh, I'm just delighted for him that he can go out on top. Not too many sports people, as all of us know, you know, uh, you both you fellas and, and myself know, not too many people get to, to choose their exit and, he was very, uh, very deserved of that, and, and it was a perfect exit. A pie, a pint, and a round of golf. Sounds like you've had a rubbish day, Baz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, Brody. Brody, I tell you. No, flat yeah, out. Flat out. <laughs> hey, uh, Brody wasn't the only one you had to, had to say goodbye to because Mo and Ali's decided to call it a day as well, mate. I mean, he obviously came back out of retirement. To He's play. blocking your number. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, so what, what was the goodbye for him like? And I, I guess, I don't know if you've had time to think about it, but what does that mean for India for you guys? Uh, well, firstly, with India, we'll deal with that in time. You know, we'll let the dust settle on this, and then we'll have a look around, and um, and we'll work out what we need. We've still got some great options there, so um, you know, when that time comes, we'll we'll give it the attention it deserves. But you know, I guess from Mo's point of view, he answered the SOS when when Leachy went down, and and uh, he came back into the group. He's incredibly well respected, not just uh, in, in uh, English cricket, but also around the world, and. He's a wonderful bloke to have in the dressing room, a strong leader in his own right, and uh, and he contributed massively for us. And you know, him watching him and Brody walk off at the end of the Test match there, arm in arm, was was pretty awesome. You know, um, he's just a, a great a great fellow who uh, who got probably a, a better exit than what he um, he had had previously as well. Um, and I know that it will make his family incredibly proud that he was able to, to do what he did in that Ashes series and, and help England perform. So, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll always be around the game, Mo, as well. He's obviously playing white ball cricket and, and franchise cricket and doing really well at that. Um, but he'll be yep. someone that, that we can always call upon for, a, uh, for, for some advice, particularly for some young spinners who are coming up. Him and Chris Vokes were, were phenomenal when they came in and uh, did their job for, for yourselves. Uh, just in that last test, there was uh, an interesting scenario that was put to, to you in uh, Australia with the, the new ball and the ball situation. Was there a case to be made for that? Oh, look, I think we probably got a little bit lucky when it came to the ball, to be honest. Mm. Um, but, look, you need a bit of luck in this in sport, don't you? And we've been waiting for <laughs> yeah. it for a little while. So we'll take it when it got presented with us. And I guess, you know, that's one of those things that, I mean, ball changes happen regularly. Sometimes they're, they're good ball. Like, they're, 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 uh, they improve the the uh, your opportunities, and sometimes they don't. Um, on this occasion, it has certainly, it certainly helped us for sure. Bez, the support from the English um, and around the Ashes, you know, from from the south up through Yorkshire um, and through Lancashire, as strong as ever. Yeah, it's been huge, mate. To be honest, the um, the, the the nation's really got them behind us, and you know, the TV broadcast numbers have been immense. The the eyeballs on the series has been quite superb, and I think it's exceeded most expectations. I think if we're looking, if we look back at the start of the Ashes, and we think. Right, this could be a heavyweight um, fight, you know. Two two good teams going at it with contrasting styles. I think at the end of it, we all sit back and we say, "What an absolute cracking series!" You know, both teams played their part. Um, both teams walk away with with uh, with some some credit as well. And and I think everyone was thoroughly entertained. And from where we stand, that's that's what the game's about, right? Is trying to obviously you want to win, but but also you want to entertain and you want to hopefully inspire the next generation to want to play cricket. And I think. As we sit here now, um, you know that seems to be the feedback. Is it was an incredibly successful series for those reasons.
Oh, entertainment factors through the roof there, um, Baz. And you're one of the reasons, mate. We're, we're finally seeing games played out and we're getting the result at the end of it. But that game that got rained out, I was talking to Smithy about it. And I wonder if you're the same. When they had rest periods in the middle of a test series, or would you love to see the day when a rain delay affects a test match, potentially having a reserve day? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm probably in a negative position here to be able to <laughs> to be able to argue this um, <laughs> this point. But um, look, I would have loved a reserve day the next day um, on that mm. occasion. But look, sometimes the the rain helps you, and sometimes it hinders uh, hinders you. But that's just the way the way the game is, right? And we knew the rain was coming, hence why we tried to to force the mm. game as much as what we possibly could and put ourselves in a in a decent position. But it wasn't to be, and I oh, know. I just think in life things are things happen for a reason and maybe that wasn't quite our time but you know I think we walk away with our heads held high and there must be a bigger plan out there somewhere at some stage. SCNZ. It's Kiwi for sport.